All right, so be warned, my copy of this LP has some sound issues, and if that's all that you're here for, then you can skip to this part of the video to hear more about it. The Antlers Green to Gold is a gorgeous album that is absolutely vinyl worthy, and the lush design and quality packaging of this LP release without a doubt adds to the experience of listening to it. The artwork is a perfect visual representation of the beauty within the album, and given that the music was written during the early morning hours, they've kept to the morning glory theme and it's exquisitely done. This release is a gatefold, however it is a single disc LP and it runs at 33 and one third RPM. The colour design is consistent throughout and the fonts are a favourite detail of mine. Lyrics as printed like this on the sleeve are preferred over an insert too. I'm a big fan of quality sleeves and the more I get to hold them the better and having lyrics on them is the best reason for it. One of the perks it has of being a gatefold on this release is that it gives it a nice thick spine which we always love to see. The photography of the flowers work for me in this instance. They even have a photo of the two band members Peter Silberman and Michael Lerner and it's actually not awful because I mean, I'm not always a fan of band photos, but this actually is perfectly fine for me. The worst part about the design for me, however, is the barcode. This album has a feel to it where it feels like it teleports me outside of a world of modern technology and the barcode kills that imagination for me, sadly. Who else misses the old LP or EPs that you'd get where they didn't have barcodes because they just weren't even invented yet, am I right? As for the disc, it came with a generic paper inner sleeve unfortunately, so I replaced it with one of my own anti-statics as you can see, which I also recommend everyone does for every single instance of a paper inner sleeve. Get those away from your records ASAP. The colour of this edition is perhaps not my favourite. I would have preferred something closer to either the dark green or the bright gold like on the label rather than the in-between that we have here on the disc. There's also the stain on mine, which I'm not concerned that much about, it's fine. The labels are a continuation of the lovely design of the sleeve, and feeling around the edges of the record shows it's a well cut one, but let's see how it shapes up in sound quality. Okay, so it's another tale of two sides. Side one is the better side, there's some audible crackle and with it being such a quiet album it's likely going to be heard, unfortunately. I even heard a pop which is not great, but I am thankful that this side doesn't have any noticeable surface noise. I have to say though, other than the crackle, nothing is lacking in sound on my setup. For side one, the puffing rates it at its lowest D+, and at the highest B+, but spends most of its time around C+. In my personal opinion, I find the ratings of the puffing to be leaning towards the harsher side, as from my own listening experience, I wouldn't rate it quite so harshly it sounds better than what the Puffin rating gives it in my opinion on side one. Unfortunately, side two is significantly worse. There's a lot more pops on this side for me and even more noticeable crackle. The Puffin grades this down into the Ds throughout the side. Do note that the Puffin's magic setting does a great job at making this a much more enjoyable listen throughout. And also bear in mind that I had rated this with the settings off as I know you probably don't have a Puffin or something similar.